Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sarnet Television. We're going to take a look at a brand new ambulance delivery here at H&W Pacific Emergency Vehicles in Hillsboro, Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest. At Sarnet, they've given us the opportunity to come and film this brand new F550 Super Duty Ford. That's the chassis that this ambulance happens to be on. It's an interesting box. It's made by Road Rescue. It's called the Ultimate Medic. So we're going to go ahead and look at the lighting on this vehicle, as well as take a look inside as well. So come along for the ride. Now, before I go ahead and turn on the engine, and we'll do that in a minute, and then the lighting systems will come on. Basically, up the front here, we have a Dominator Plus series light head that has been assembled onto the front grill area of this F550. Then in these very nice chrome housings, which are actually made by a company called CPI, Cass Products, that particular company has installed the 500 series super LED linears from Whelan Engineering. In fact, all of the lighting on this vehicle happens to be Whelan. So again, we've got the Dominator Plus up here. Then we have 500 series linears below that. Then as we move down into the lower area, we have some additional supplementary halogen scene lighting that would allow the area to be lit up in the front of the vehicle, tied in with some very impressive air horns. The siren speakers themselves for this particular vehicle are also made by CPI Cast Products, and they are in a chrome housing. It's a very, very sturdy product mounted into the front bumper. Now, a little bit of a story behind CPI. It's a company that's been around for a long time. In fact, at Sirenet, we have sold their product in the past. Their history goes back to the days of ambulances, which obviously this is, and they make product that is specifically designed for the ambulance market. So this particular speaker assembly in this very nice chrome housing has been designed to mount onto the front bumper of the F-Series vehicle from Ford. So that's what the customer has requested and the manufacturer has built into this particular ambulance. Now it's a very large ambulance as you can see here and compared to ambulances in other parts of the world it's probably quite bluntly ginormous. But anyway, this is America and we like things big and we like them to be loud and we also like them to be bright. What we've also included in this particular vehicle on the left and on the right side are 700 series light heads, they're super LEDs, linear of course from Whelan. And the objective here is to give you left and right side protection as you enter the intersection. So you've got plenty of light lower down on the front of the vehicle and again plenty of light, and you'll see it in a moment when I turn it on, left and right with respect to the front fender area. Above the Pullman nameplate we have a Whelan Plus series. Edge Plus actually series lighthead. It is the 4500 series and inside that are some 700 series super LED linears which have been placed very nicely in there. In the center area of the light bar you have a infrared unit that's what's mounted directly in the middle there. Now this is an Opticom emitter the concept behind this is it will change the traffic signals from red to green it's something that's very common in the United States and possibly in some other parts of the world, but this system has been set up for that and of course also including our friends in Canada. Straight down from that, just in the Pullman area, you have a very nice go light which has been mounted on top of an air dam which is designed to deflect air from above the cab and up over the roof of the vehicle. As we move along the side of the vehicle, now again we're now in the ambulance portion. We've got the front cab here from Ford and then of course we're moving into the body. Directly above here are a series of 900 series light heads. The first one is a 900 series super LED. The one beside that are a scene light and that happens to be in halogen. Now again the configuration of this vehicle was set up by the client. So we have LED and then we have halogen takedown lights or scene lights basically running along the side of the vehicle here. You've got basically three to give a good amount of illumination down into the field. As you move down lower, we actually have a 600 series in a chrome flange. This, of course, is a linear. You can see the linear LEDs in here. But I'm going to move to the back of the vehicle, and you can see some of the lighting that's been set up on the back. And it's essentially an array here. It's pretty much standard. Ambulances in the United States have to meet a KKK federally mandated standard, so the configuration is pretty much set up. There are some variants, of course, available, but what we have here are LEDs, 900 series, left and right side of the main doors, along with additional LEDs. I'll step up here. There we go. Up here, these are LED 
700 series in a very nice chrome flange. And then, of course, we have the halogen version of the 700 series scene light mounted left and right of the LED version. As we come down to the side here, we can see the uh, reverse lights. This is in halogen. It's a 600 series. We have a 600 series brake light. And then up the top here, that's LED. And then up the top here, we have a 600 series LED arrow concept being. Want to turn left, want to turn right, on they come. Here's the brakes, and into reverse, it comes on in clear. What some of our customers do is they actually tie the standard braking in with some of the emergency lighting. And we can go ahead and turn that on right now. Basically, the brake light comes on, as you can see on the lower level, and then again on the top to give that extra warning that you're about to stop. Well, as you know, at Sirenet, we don't sell ambulances, but H&W Pacific Emergency Vehicles does. And this is a vehicle that they have spec'd out for Pullman Fire Department and their paramedics. What you have in here is an oxygen holder. Uh, this is designed to actually come down onto the ground to allow you to mount the oxygen bottle into it and then retract back into the vehicle. So that's what goes on inside here. And of course, there's plenty of storage space on this particular vehicle as we move around. I'll quickly show you the inside compartments. You can see them there. And these are adjustable trays, so you can adjust the height depending on the type of equipment that you want to. So these are standard doors. And then down the side here, as we move along, we actually have a roll-up door. And again, different types of equipment of storage can be put inside this here, including this unit will move out to allow you to get access to equipment in a hurry and then lock back into position. And of course, we've got flashlights available on Sirenet. These actually are a very interesting product. It's a light box. Now, we'll go inside the vehicle in a minute, but I want to just continue our little walk around, as they say. Another compartment area is here. And then as we move along in this area, we have the battery storage. This is the battery storage for the vehicle, not the engine, but the actual ambulance portion. And again, plenty of storage. Now, there's something interesting with this vehicle that I want to show you real quick with the storage. This is where you would store, or these paramedics would store, their jump kits, their EMT boxes. And again, as you can see, there's plenty of storage space. But in a conventional ambulance currently, this will be mounted on the other side of the entry door, which is over here. What the gang over at Road Rescue have done is they have moved it. And actually, I quite like it. It's a nice object. You have the ability to gain access here into the actual ambulance with your gear stored on this side here. So it gives more space from an entry perspective. So it's quite a nice setup on this particular ambulance from Road Rescue. When I open the door here, actually there's a step that will come down to give you comfortable access inside the ambulance compartment. Well, let's come inside the vehicle. And as you can see here, with me walking around, there's lots of space. By the way, that alarm that you're going to keep hearing going off from time to time is the oxygen low alarm. And obviously, there's no oxygen tied into the oxygen storage area. So it will be warning us that there's no oxygen. The cabinetry in here is very nicely positioned. As you can see here, plenty of storage with respect to holding medical supplies. There's cabinetry on this side here. And again, as we move alongside the area where the cot otherwise would be, lots and lots of storage. It has a very, very nice, sturdy feel to this vehicle as well. And in this area here, this is where the paramedic would sit, or the doctor, if that was the case in other parts of the world. Again, with plenty of control information here, all other medical type of equipment will be placed in this area. On the lower level here, this is where the ambulance stretcher or cot would go. And again, it's been set up to take that. And then underneath here, this is an additional storage area. So in other words, if you had to transport, got to lie down and get a little bit of sleep. Oh, there we go. Right, it's so comfortable. So if you lie down here, basically, you could actually have another patient in this particular area. And of course, you would put something behind their head. Underneath here, if I find the clip correctly, there we go. Plenty of additional storage available in that area as well. And a very, very nice and sturdy closing. This is a disposable area for shop 
items such as syringes and other medical products that need to be stowed away safely. As I mentioned earlier, the area to store the EMT or paramedic boxes are in this area. In previous and other types of ambulances, they're more up to this side. This is a nice configuration because, again, when the paramedic is sitting here, they have the ability to reach for equipment as opposed to have to try and reach back in that area. One thing also nice about this ambulance is you have daylight coming in here. A lot of patients like to feel that they're not in a totally encapsulated box, so there's some light coming in. Pullman is in a very rural but beautiful part of Washington State, and they need to do long-range transport. So one of the other things is you can close this if you have to, and then allows you to even use this as a writing board should the need arise. So you have the ability to close this off, additional privacy if that is required. Also up here is the ability to store your glove boxes, different sizes for different sizes of people, all the electrical outlets and so forth are there as well. Now this ambulance also has, open this door here, over here, has an air ride suspension that will allow it to go up and down depending on the situation with the patient. So in other words, once the patient is put into the ambulance, the suspension at the rear of the ambulance will rise, and when you need to take the patient out, it will drop down. Now again, we at Sirenet do not sell ambulances. But as I mentioned earlier, H&W Pacific does, so you can check them out online. They're great people, great people to work with. And I hope that you've had a chance to take a look at some of the lighting around this particular vehicle. And again, the configuration of this ambulance has been set up in conjunction with H&W Pacific and, of course, Pullman Fire and Rescue in the great state of Washington. Now, the actual control panel in this ambulance has been set up by Road Rescue, and there are some products that we sell here at SirenNet. We have, of course, the Whelan 200-watt siren control head mounted in here. We then also have the GoLight product on this side here as well. And then as we move further up here, we have a Little Light map light. And again, this array is a configuration that's been set up by Road Rescue. It's giving the crew information about what's happening with the vehicle's electrical system, as well as the ability to turn on and off additional lighting when the need arises. Well, let's go ahead and take the vehicle for a quick run and then get a chance to see the emergency lighting out on the road. Now, one of the things with this vehicle, when you put it into park, all of the white light gets turned off. And when you put it into drive, all of the white light comes on. Let's take it for a quick run. Well, there you have it from H&W Pacific Emergency Vehicles here in Hillsborough, Oregon. It's a somewhat summery day in the Pacific Northwest. Many thanks for watching Sarnet Television. I'm Stuart. See you soon.